everybody, welcome to the planning committee. My name is Councillor Anita Leach, and I'm chair of the committee. My role this evening is to ensure that the committee runs smoothly and with regard to behaviour and evidence. So the rest of the people on the tables are here tonight. To my immediate right is the Councillor Solicitor, who will give advice to the committee on any procedural or legal matters that might arise. To my left are the Council's Planning Officer's Highway Engineer and Environmental Health Officer, who will present the applications this evening and give any techni technical advice to the committee which may be sought. The rest of the people we see down both sides of the tables are the elected members who will consider the applications this evening and to make the decisions. Before each application is considered, there will be a short presentation by the Planning Officer. In the event that an application has received a qualifying petition signed by 25 signatories or more, one representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of, in support of the petition and has up to five minutes. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicant or their agent will be invited to make representation to the committee in support of their application, again for up to five minutes. However, if a petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicant or their agent will not be invited to make any representation. A ward councillor can address the committee in relation to an application. The ward councillor may speak on behalf of the residents. However, once the ward councillor has returned to the public gallery, they may not return to take part in any debate that may follow by the committee. The application will then be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee who will then make a decision on the application. If a site visit is requested and approved by the committee, that matter will not be discussed this evening and it will be discussed at a subsequent planning meeting. If that does arise, then I'll give people time to leave if they, if they do wish to leave. The other announcement I'd like to make is regarding the webcasting. Uh, we are obviously, you've seen the signs that we are webcasting these meetings. If you are going to speak and you don't want to be webcast, if you could just let me know, then we can sort of let you not uh, actually done. Okay? Members, can I have approval of the minutes on pages one to six of your application, your packs, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Are there any declarations of interest? Uh, yes, Chair. Um, on page, away on page 505 of the delegated uh, authorities given, uh, there is one in the name of Magenta, and as a board director of Magenta Living, I have to be very careful and express my own, uh, interest, and as I say, it's a pleasure. Thanks, Steve. Are there any requests for site visits? Thanks, Chair. I'd like to uh, refer members to uh, application number 10 uh, on the agenda, application number 00770, land adjacent to Pine Tree Pools in Walsey Village, that uh, future concerns of overdevelopment in the area and the effect it will have on the retirement uh, properties in the adjacent to Thank you. Are there any others? Yes. Sorry, yes, Chair. Um, due to uh, quite an interest in planning history, and uh, much local um, objection and interest, I would move that we have site visits on item number five, which is Mark Hill and the Thank you, Steve. Mary, thank you, Chair. Uh, number six, application 00519, Gracebury Nursing Home. Uh, we would like a site visit uh, so that everyone can see the impact as this is likely to have on the surrounding areas. Thank you, members. So that's agenda item five, Lark Hill Avenue Upton, agenda item six, Rosebury Nursing Home, and agenda item ten, land adjacent to Pine Tree Court. Are we happy to approve those five items? Yes, Thank you very much. So for members of the public who are here for those particular applications, uh, Lark Hill Avenue, Rosebury Nursing Home, and land adjacent to Pine Tree Court. If you do want to leave now, we'll give you a couple of minutes to do so, because we won't be discussing that this evening. <coughs> Okay, 
members, if you can uh, prepare yourselves for agenda item four, which is pages seven to twelve in your packs. And I'm going to be ready for another presentation, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Planning Commission has sought for the demolition of the existing two story house and the erection of the building containing eight apartments over two to three storeys. The second floor of the development will be in the roof. Uh, the proposal includes eight parking spaces and cycle parking in front of the site. It's within a primarily residential area uh, where new residential development for flats can be accepted in principle subject to unitary development plan policy HS4 supplementary plan development document to alter its flat development and the national planning policy framework. Uh, the site is set as currently occupied by one detached house which is set in a large plot and mature landscape into all boundaries. A tree preservation order covers the majority of trees to the front and rear of the site. The proposed building has a similar building line to the existing house on the site, but is a wider and deeper building. Although it's wider, it still retains a good distance to each adjacent house on the other side of the site, which is reflective of, of plot spacing within the area, and it has over 60% of the site remains being developed as part of an area. The design from the front is that of a large dwelling, so it's Three story and stepping down to two story and grace adjacent to number 18. Um, and the property is deep and runs back into the site. Um, several trees will be lost as a result of the development. Some on the frontage where parking areas are kept. These aren't protected trees in, in this instance. But there are trees to the back of the site, conifers, which are supposed to be lost as well, which is just to make room on the site. Uh, it's not clear whether these are included in the tree preservation order, as it's quite an old tree preservation order and these were planted, it seems, later as a, a barrier to the back of the site. Um, however, other trees at the back of the site will be retained and spread it, and deep uh, not two trees at the back. There have been two back surveys carried out on the site uh, to establish whether there's any presence of facts in the dwelling around the site. Um, back presence is negligible, they've seen sort of single pipistral views in the, the dwelling, accessing the dwelling. Um, and on that basis, it's proposed that if members are minded to approve an additional condition requiring back boxes on the site would be proposed. This isn't on the list, this is one of the proposed So we feel on balance it meets the policy requirements, so it's in an area where we can get residential development uh, and is recommended for approval. There is a full petition check. Thank you. Um, we do have a qualifying petition on this. Is there a petition that wants to come forward to speak? Okay, is there a board council wants to speak on this? Would you like to come forward, please? Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, if I could just ask you to turn on your microphone, just state your name for our records, and then um, state your name for the board. Yes, I'm Jane Lee Hodgson. My name is Councillor Les Rollins uh, from the Hesswell Board. And I'm here to speak on, obviously, on behalf of my constituents of Hesswell. I'm sure you've all received and read the letters and sites of photographs from Mr. Julian D. Rias, a concerned neighbour who outlines his concerns along with many others with regards to the impact on the community, the concerns about the design, the non compliance with local policy, the impact on highways, the layout and building lines, the effect on privacy. The concerns about the restricted covenant, I draw, I draw your attention to local objective SPD 2, 2.9. There has been an increased demand for self-contained apartments, which means rural established residential areas are being eroded. This application with its bulk and massing would be harmful in its impact to the area. It contravenes S S SPD 2, 5.8 because the development of the adjoining properties would be mutually overbearing and dominant, and it does not comply with the criteria for the new housing development policy. The proposed development would have a severely negative impact, not only on Mr. and Mrs. Hankinson's as immediate neighbours, but also on the surrounding properties. The character of the area and the safety of the vehicle access. The planning statement submitted with the application fails to engage in depth on the issues and fails to properly consider the applicable policy requirements. Fundamentally, 
ratification is not in accordance with the UK. <coughs> Furthermore, as I have stated, a restricted covenant on the development site charges register, which prevents the erection of more than two dwelling houses on the site. The construction of eight apartments would be a breach of that covenant. I would like to draw your attention to what I consider the lack of proper assessment within the planning officer's report. It gives very little consideration to the application of shortcomings when assessed against the Council's planning policy, <coughs> namely HS4. In particular, the report is silent on the pre-application concerns of officers, which quite rightly highlighted reservations about bulk and mass, the need to prevent overdominance and to ensure character of the area. As far as I can see, the plan has not been amended in any way to address those initial concerns. In terms of HS4, those issues have not been addressed. The introduction to the Council's SPD2, Designing for Self-Contained Apartments, addresses the objectives of local planning policy and states why the SPD has been prepared. It says the increased demand for property developers for self-contained apartments has led to concerns that the character of the rural's residential areas are being eroded by demolition of unlisted buildings, the loss of landscape gardens and overdevelopment, the impact of traffic and local heritage. That is why this policy was introduced in the first place. The Council has a long-standing determination to achieve the regeneration of the older residential areas in East World. The interim planning policy on new housing development, introduced in 2005, which restricted development in the west of the borough, did much to support the regeneration of, the, of East World. The contribution to the proposed housing need by rural waters development is welcome, but the impact on those areas of rural in need of regeneration arising from the removal of restraints in Real West continues to be felt. In the case of this application and the numerous local objectives, they have identified many ways in which this proposal is in conflict with the UDP SPD <coughs> The approval of a project which is in conflict with the Council's own policies would also contribute to the lack of interest in developers developing elsewhere. I therefore respectfully request that the committee refuse the application in respect of this proposed development. To allow this application would create a dense, multi-occupation property which does not align with the character of the area. To allow it would leave open to an application for judicial review, which for all the reasons I've set out above, is likely to be successful. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, I Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I think this was one of those occasions when the site visit was very beneficial. I don't think we could see on the drawing before us, on the two-dimensional black and white plan and on the agenda, the impact this was likely to have on the area. Having been on the site visit, I found it very interesting. Um, the major thing that I saw, and I'm sure others may comment on the same thoughts, was that clearly the proposed land, um, site size, if you like, or the footprint of what is proposed is almost nearly getting on to three times, certainly two times the size of the existing development. The other thing that uh, was quite apparent from the site visit was how far it was going to extend into the rear garden of the existing property. To the extent I would have thought that the windows on the rear elevation are virtually going to be in contact with the trees that are supposed to be being retained as part of the landscaping feature. It just looked to me, in simple terms, from my perspective as a former builder, that it was an overdevelopment of the site, and I didn't think it was a suitable solution for that particular location. That only came to my mind, really, Chair, as a result of going on the site visit. Without being on the site visit, I would probably have thought this was an acceptable solution. But having been on the site visit, I am very concerned about the impact of this particular development, particularly the size of it, <coughs> and the character and uh, the fact that it's a massive increase on the existing footprint. Thanks, Jim.
Thank you, David Catholic. Uh, yes, to you, Chair. Uh, I thought the site visit was very illuminating, especially as, as David has said, as far as the, uh, the depth of the building and the height. Um, to the site number 14, uh, the dwelling, uh, the, new, the new dwelling, will come out to just five metres from the side of the uh, of the, the, the board number 14, 5 inches, 15 feet, uh, when you're faced with a blank wall with perhaps obscure windows, three stories high, is quite significant to my view. There are eight, um, eight butcher apartments, one is a three bedroom, there are seven that are two bedroom. By my, my calculation, if you just have two bedrooms, uh, two bathrooms, lounge, kitchen, diner, you're looking at probably 49 rooms in that building. Now, I don't know about anybody else in this room, but I don't know many houses that have 49 rooms in them unless they're called stately homes, and I don't think they've got the other stately home application on this land. Uh, the trees at the back uh, are quite significant, but if some of them are going to be lost, then um, although apparently 60% of the property isn't going to be developed, um, I, I can't see how that is, personally, but when you look at the size and the dense, uh, I wouldn't like to be the neighbours on either side, especially with 14. I'm sure if he wandered out of his house after this was uh, built, he probably thought there was a village department store in the back door and the next door. Uh, the front of it will all be demolished the trees, so the sight line on Brinstead's Road, as you drive up it, there'll be no trees anymore there, there won't be car parking spaces. I think it's totally out of character of the area. I know somebody uh, at number 26, there are two little double windows on one house on Brinstead's Road. For that particular property, Really, the windows look as if they're there more to uh, soften the, the line of the ridge of the roof as opposed to be dwelling. Um, either way, I think it's an early development of the site. Thank you, Kathy Steve. Um, yes, Chair, I think uh, when you visit the site, when you get over the shock of someone wants to demolish what is a beautiful property in the first place, you, you, you think, what, what, what is going on here? But actually, when you get on the site, it's a huge site, a massive site. Uh, and in terms of scale and the view from Princess Road, um, there are large properties on that, that run, very large properties. We go further down uh, on, on the, the previous plan, but there's one that's been extended. Again, you get over the shopping home. Why would someone want to extend a property of such enormous size? What people do. Uh, there's an economic case for it, and there's a housing need case for it, actually. Um, I want, to, I want to stay back into the debate that I couldn't take part in on uh, Monday, Monday evening, but we are looking at numbers and, and sites that will protect other areas that seem to be higher in priority than this particular um, type of development. So my view is that we will see people not living in large houses, but large houses being converted into yeah, very expensive self-contained flats, but nevertheless not not the cost of a, of, a, of a massive property. So my view is that the office has probably got this right on balance. It's actually further away from number 18. You see the, the outline there. It meets the separation distances. It, it, it fits in with the sort of scale of some of the gardens and sites in, the, in that row. The fact that it, it is a, a multiple dwelling um, is, is not that relevant in, in, in my eyes in terms of the planning aspect. So my view would be, on balance shafts, obviously quite right, um, and it would, given what we're seeing in terms of inspectors' decisions about the numbers of houses being coming through, and we can talk about that later, I think this would, if we refuse, it would be turned over on appeal. Uh, my view is that it's you know, unusual for such a beautiful house to be demolished, but you can see the economic and the housing need sense that that has promoted it, so I think on balance the officers may have got Oh. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm, I'm also going to say I think that the, the site visit impacted, impacted my, my expectations. I, I know the road and the picture, I think, three storeys, and um, before I'd gone to the site visit, I was expecting to see you know, something that would feel entirely, entirely crammed in. But on the site visit, I think I did see a, a huge space of land in terms of the existing garden, and having seen the design that's just up on the screen there, I, um, I was very pleasantly surprised, I think, to see that three storeys in my expectation of three stories, I pictured a very big square of a grey three story box. In terms of the actual comparison to the existing building, which is two stories, the, the height doesn't seem to be that much, in, it, it doesn't seem to exceed the existing plot that much in terms of height. Um, so 
possibly could have been too many properties. So I, I was, I was, my mind I think was um, was broadened by the site and also by the by the site. Thanks. Anybody else? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so we have moved on this place. Through you, Chad, you have some words for the students on if you would like to say anything else on this one. Okay, can we come here and go to the please? Um, I'd like the officers to confirm that the words I'm going to use are adequate and sustainable. Um, SPD 2, final point take the development of the next property would be visually overbearing and dominant and an overdevelopment. HS4 1, profit scale that relates well to surrounding property, in particular with respect to the existing densities and form of development. And HS4 2 results in a detrimental change in the character of the area, being a significant development of apartments in a neighbourhood of detached single household dwellings. Obviously, there, there are fine reasons for refusal. And I think it's just being subjective, so yes, they, they could be sustainable, but we've taken into account even more recommendations. Okay, so Cathy's moved to the previous one. Do we have a seconder? Thank you, David. All those in favour of refusal? All those against? Okay, um, so if we, the officer's recommendation is to approve the subject to the conditions listed, uh, there is uh, the latest does contain additional items um, that, that, that need to be added, and also we had the verbal um, recommendation about black boxes. So if I can have a mover for approval, please. Uh, so if that's both in favour, Chair, I'm formally moving with the extra conditions. Do you have a second, Dad? Yeah, I'll have a second. Thanks, David. All those in favour of approval? Identify her neighbour 
as a site for their disposal of land, and the site would require a replacement provision. Support England have raised an objection based on these um, grounds that this isn't going to be provided. There is an extant outline planning permission for resident, uh, residential development on the site, which was granted at a fee. The applicant at the time, at the time um, proposed a four block housing provision and a commuted sum towards pitch provision. However, the inspector considered that the site had no sport or recreation value, as it was private land, had no access to formal recreation, and the playing field needed to be limited, but there no evidence that the schools, and there was no evidence that other schools wishing to require it. Furthermore, the inspector considered that the playing field did not make any contribution to sports pitches for the wider community, um, and none at all um, happened in the last 20 years, and therefore, to seek, seek an application for further provision would not fulfil the test of necessity. It's therefore considered that there was, as there was an extended planning commission in place for development, um, the site of housing, the site of housing is a material consideration in the determination of this application. And if members are minded to support this recommendation, the application will have to be referred to the Secretary of State as there is an objection from supporting it. In relation to the impact of the proposal residential on the residential use of the surrounding occupiers, it's considered that the proposal is of a scale and relates well to the surrounding area. The design for development is commensurate with the surrounding properties and all the required interface distances can be met. In relation to the affordable housing provision, the applicant has agreed to provide the required 20% on site um, provision, which equates to, to six units. There have been a number of objections to the proposed development on highway grounds. The proposed scheme contains garages and off street car parking within the urban um, of each dwelling house. Um, the access roads are width to ensure that cars can pass in opposite directions at the same time, and the authorities, highway engineers, have no objections to the proposal on highway grounds. It's therefore, um, for these reasons, the proposal is considered to be acceptable, and members are requested to support the application, plus the one of six affordable housing, and some additional conditions related to the protection of trees on the site. Um, Can I just clarify there is a petitioner? There is a petitioner, yeah. Okay, would the petitioner like to speak on this matter? I don't propose to stay, but Councillor Norbury will deal with it on our part. Okay, Councillor Norbury, would you like to come forward, please? So, Councillor Norbury is going to speak. Thank you. I'd like to draw the Cap Planning Committee's attention through you, Chair, um, to the petition, which has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six main objections. The first being the development plan, the second being traffic, the third being open space and recreational sports facility, which we've heard about already, uh, fourth being drainage, fifth, conduct of the developer. And six would be an overview, and I'll, I'll sum that up. But just to concentrate on the development plan, it is understood that the, plan, the planning department, in their pre application, advised to the developers stress that regard should be had to the privacy, privacy of existing dwellings. This has not been adhered to, particularly the dwellings in Glenavon Road, whose privacy has been severely compromised. UDP HS4 criteria for new housing development policy clearly states that any proposal should be on a scale which relates well to surrounding property, in particular with regard to density and, and, and form of development. The key word here is densities. This is a mature residential area, it is not new housing state and therefore is not appropriate all distances between buildings are kept to the absolute minimum. So the, the development is going to be um, a number of houses crushed into a cul-de-sac, which is not in uh, uh, in, in adhering with the um, pension community as it exists at the moment. The distance between the houses, and the houses are appropriate on the density grounds. The gardens in Glenavon Road are small. But this is because the original benefactor left the recreational facility 
at the rare survey were not overlooked. A plan should be studied of the Prenton residential area. The interface between the rear of the properties allows for reasonable sized gardens, but not with the proposed development. An example would be um, superimposed. The site plan into the plan for the opposite side of Glenham Road, which reflects the size of the gardens without the fact that the road will run centrally down the proposed site. This factor should be reflected in any proposed development. The planning department should attend the site, which I think they have done last week, with the pro uh, properties staked out out on the Prenton area to understand the impact upon the surrounding residents. So that the concern is the distance between the new developments and the existing residents. Although we had a site visit last week, this didn't happen, the, the developers didn't state that out. The developers plan does not accord with UDP HS4 and incorporate accessible open space and children's play area in accordance with policy GR6. The development plan has a major impact on the environment around the homes and the residential residents' quality of life. The development proposed having regard to the site of the building and by reason of the number of units proposed would result in an over-intensive use of the site resulting in cramped and unsatisfactory living conditions that fall short of the good standard of amenities for occupants of the buildings and surrounding residents sought by paragraph 17 of the National Planning Policy Framework. So that's covering uh, the development plan and why we believe um, this should not be accepted as a planned application. Madam Chair, I come on to um, traffic. The proposed entrance to development will have an unacceptable impact on the highway safety as a result of the introduction of significant number of additional vehicle movements. The traffic in surrounding areas is already an issue in the Prenton area, again contrary to HDP HS4. The relevant department has not fully addressed this issue and the residents believe that an environmental assessment should be carried out on the impact of the additional traffic that flows from the development. Prior to this proposal, proposed development, the heavy traffic in Glenavon Road and Carlow Road was already an issue. It is the only, it only direct resume route between the two major roads, Prenton Hall Road and Woodchurch Road. It is referred to as a rat run. There have been two road traffic incidents in Glenavon Road at the beginning of August 2018. We move on to Prenton Primary School. Prenton Primary School in Bramall Road, very close to the, to the proposed development, almost opposite the proposed site entrance is the entrance to Bramall Road where the traffic from the school regularly comes out, particularly on the school drop-off and pick-up times. We've already got a situation around the school where um, we've set up a working party to try and uh, um, placate which is unruly and anti-social behaviour by many of the people using that facility to drop off and pick up children. So we're actually working with the school, with the residents, with the associations and with the police to mitigate the circumstances that are already happening in that area. This is only going to compound that situation and put children's uh, life, well, children's safety, um, vulnerable children's safety at risk. So what, you know, what, why make a, a bad situation worse um, by introducing more traffic to the area in, in a way that's going to back up traffic coming to and from Glenavon Road. So we're very, very concerned about that. Traffic in, in particular at a critical level at commuter time in the morning, as in addition to Prem Primary School, Glenavon Road, 
also have large play school. So there's also a large play school there which is used um, throughout the day. As a general issue, Pren tenants and residents associations have also raised concerns about the volume and speed of traffic on Prenton Hall Road. We have a massive traffic situation, massive, massive traffic problems throughout the Prenton area and this is only going to compound that. Each, each resident in the type of house that's going to be built here are likely to have two or three vehicles and they're likely to be uh, very active within the rush hour uh, times because these type, of, uh, these type of houses will be bought by professional people, will be working people. It's, re it's reasonable to assume that the 28 new four bedroom towns will generate at least an additional 56 cars. The proposed entrance to the development is not adequate and this issue was raised by the inspectors on previous appeals. And although the um, planning committee um, came along to the site visit, a lot of questions were asked about the, the uh, entrance and whether two cars could actually pass that entrance on a regular basis. And there was some confusion around whether that could happen or not, like some clarification on that chair. If, if, if two vehicles can actually pass, because we've got great concerns if two vehicles can't actually pass, our vehicles are moving in and out of there on, on, on rush hours, particularly on the school drop off and pick up area. There's going to be a backlog of cars up and down the Avon Road, which is going to create chaos in the area. The post access will have an accessible impact highway safety, particularly to the children of Prenton as a result of the introduction of a significant number of different number of difficult traffic movements in the Brent locality and therefore is contrary to UDP HS4. I'd like to I know that the planning committee um, have have read um, the, the, the report and the petition so I'd like to just sum up really um, how the residents feel you know I've, I've made a sum up document how we feel. The residents are not opposed to the development of the site, but Madam Chair, 32 houses are to be squeezed into a tight cul-de-sac to extract maximum profit for the developer and the landowner. Where is the social value for the existing residents? As far as I can see, none of the mitigating proposals are to be put into place, which will have given social value in the spirit of the co covenant and the gift from the walkers. Indeed the, indeed, the existing residents will be in a worse position facing possible road traffic danger and a worsening of the environment. The residents feel the landowner has driven rough shot over their needs in order to extract maximum profit from his venture. For example, Madam Chair, the existing buildings burning down and not being replaced Mature trees from the centre of the land removed, seemingly without, without permission. Horseplay in the JCB by employees of developer leading to damage to residential property. In the name of democracy and the spirit of planning process, I beg you to reject this application. As a Labour councillor representing the people of Prenton, we do not want to see our, our planning process process to send into a vehicle for developers and landowners to extract wealth from our environments and the communities who live in them at the expense of the many for the benefit of the few. Thank you Chair. Footways will be present on either side of the proposed access 
and a footway into the development will be provided along the southern side of the access. <coughs> Given the nature of the highway and the traffic movements along it, the proposed access will provide all highway users with safe and suitable access to the development. The roads in the vicinity of the site are residential. The area has a typical traffic flow characteristic associated with an urban area, that is distinct AM and PM flow periods. The analysis presented in the transport statement confirms that the traffic associated with 28 dwellings will cause no material impact on the safety and efficiency of the highway network. With regards to concerns about traffic near Prince and Primary School, which is located approximately 400 metres away from the proposed site, congestion around schools is typical and only occurs for a relatively short period of time in the morning and evenings, with the evening period not coinciding with the peak period of the development. This is an existing issue which, which will not be exacerbated by the development. According to the accident data provided to the Council by Most Side Police, there is no record of any collisions in August 2018 on the Road. A review of the accident record shows that it had a good record over an extended period of time, with no injury related collisions having occurred on the Lenin Road or Bramwell Avenue over the last five year period. Therefore, the accident re record does not represent a material concern in the context of the, of the development. Thank you. Can I open this up to the committee? Thanks, thanks, Kev. Um, again, it was a side visit that I feel was beneficial uh, because on paper it looked like a reasonable application. Um, and indeed, looking at the map uh, that's on the uh, display behind you, again, it looks like a reasonable application. I was surprised and concerned about the proposal, not so much to demolish number 81 from the name, because we've seen similar, um, similar developments elsewhere where a developer has bought a house. <coughs> Area semi detached houses, demolish them to make access uh, to de developments of this size. Uh, I can recall one on Upton Road, sharing your ward, where I think it was 79 and 81, it was going to be demolished to build a similar number of houses on what had previously been a sports field. But in that case, it was a pair of semi detached houses that were both obtained by the developer, demolished to create a wide enough access. And I hear what the highways officer says about the, the uh, access point 5.5 metres. I was surprised when we went on the site visit at the narrowness of the proposed road and the developer's proposal to build a new house, albeit a smaller house, on the site of 81. I don't understand the logic of that, frankly. Um, I realise that's not grounds to refuse the application, but I think the access concerns from what the councillor has said and from what we saw on the site visit are my primary concern about this application, um, not so much the development of the land, which unfortunately, as it is, uh, there has been no use for it for many years. I think a number of residents have said that they are prepared to see some development on the site. So I'm, I'm concerned really about the highway's access point, um, and particularly the logic of, as I said, building a new house when they can obviously want to make access. I don't understand the logic of that at all. Steve. Oh, yeah. As you say, um, know this know the city quite well. Um, was glad that the site visit, like, like everybody else. Um, I, I can probably name, I can probably name off the top of my head, 2030 cul-de-sacs with exactly similar width access in and out. It's not uncommon, it's a standard uh, that the highways work to. I think we need to go back a, a step though.